I'm gonna show you seven rotor brush secrets that will make your rotoscoping faster, cleaner, and more precise. Let's dive into it. Rotoscoping can be a lifesaver in post-production, but it could also be a huge time drain if you're not using the right techniques. So I'm gonna let you in on some secret techniques that I use to make my life easier when rotoscoping every time. So if you're working with a static shot, and let's say your subject walks in the scene, that means you have a clean plate at frame one. So try using the difference mat instead of the rotor brush. This technique subtracts the clean plate from your scene, leaving you with just a moving subject. Simply duplicate your layer, freezing the bottom layer at the clean plate frame, and on the top layer, add the difference mat effect, selecting the clean plate and adjust the parameters until your subject is isolated. Here's a little known trick. If you don't have enough separation from your subject and the background, you could use the curves effect before introducing the rotor brush effect to help separate your subject from the background even before you start rotoscoping. After your roto, just duplicate your effect on one layer, remove the curves effect, and apply a track mat from your roto layer. And voila, you have a clean roto of your low contrast shot. So once you're happy with your rotoscope, freeze it. The rotor brush will constantly update its mat or propagate every time you open or change the comp. But once you're all set with your roto, freezing it locks it in temporarily, speeding up your workflow. Don't worry, you could actually unfreeze it and go back and make changes. So let's say you freeze your rotoscope and your computer is still dragging. No problem. If you're all done with your roto, just duplicate your layer, hide one version for safekeeping just in case. Solo the roto layer and export a pre-render with an alpha channel and re-import back into the comp. This reduces the processing load so your computer doesn't explode. So you might have a roto that you think looks perfect, but when you see the final result, it looks like hot garbage. Use the alpha overlay view to check the quality of your roto edges. This allows you to see different overlays to see where your roto may need some extra attention. It becomes much easier to identify any roughed or missing edges that need cleaning up. If you have a scene where your subject is moving really fast creating motion blur, all you have to do is check the motion blur box to ensure your roto matches the motion blur naturally, maintaining that realistic motion blur and giving you a nice rotoscope. This one is by far my favorite one of them all. If your subject has difficult hair or soft edges, the refine edge tool will be your best friend. It could refine the edges of even the most challenging areas like hair or blurred motion. To access the Refine Edge tool, just click and hold the rotor brush icon and you could see Refine Edge tool. You could also hit Option W to switch between the two. So use this when you're cleaning up your edges when you're almost done with your roto. Now you're ready to become a master at rotoscoping. If you want to see more, check out my rotoscoping playlist right here.